about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. For by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident that you saw I need to say I love. box she broke it I can waste it if it is before you and he looked at her heart and said everywhere the gospel is preached even though this woman was not ordained into ministry you cannot ignore her because she has communicated her love can I tell you something I know about God there are certain dimensions in God that only genuine lovers, those whose hearts have been purged sincerely to love him, not for things. I know we are humans. We need things to be. Some of you here are sick. Some of you came expecting increases of all sorts. But can I tell you sincerely, there are no gimmicks with God. If he cannot find himself in your heart, your heart must reflect his face back to him as a mirror. Otherwise, he does not trust what is there. Don't say I love the Lord. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than ministry? Do you love me more than titles? Do you love me more than power? More than signs and wonders? If I tell you to quit ministry now, will you still love me? If I tell you you may never drive a car in your life again, will you still love me? Or is the rolling just because you had a dream and you saw a car? There's nothing wrong with it. But you see, the prayer that God purifies your motif is a real prayer. A genuine prayer. We have a generation of people who love God today and in a heartbeat when God gives them rest round about. Why should I come to church again? I've gotten what I'm looking for. Why should I come to church again? I'm now a politician. I'm busy traveling around. I'm now a leader. I'm too busy. I, I will follow online one day. And God says, I knew it. See, God reminded David 
and said let me let you know that i've not forgotten while you were a shepherd boy now you are king i have seen the consistency of your desire every other thing change except your desire listen if you want god to bless you change every other thing except that desire change cars that's all right change buildings that's all right change clothes that's all right change approach to ministry that's all right but never allow that desire to die the same desire as a shepherd boy the same desire as a king i like to see your glory revealed can i tell you this if i have any fear in my life at all it's not losing ministry if i have any fear in my life it's not losing power if i have any fear in my life it's not losing my name or what you call reputation if i have any fear in my life it's not untimely death if i have any fear in my life is to get to a point where that presence where my heart condition my heart now exalts something above God. You can exalt prayer and fasting above God. You can exalt Bible study above God. The Bible talks about God, but God is a person. You can even exalt heaven above God. You can exalt breakthrough above God. My son, give me You want to host God? This is the secret. Most of my encounters, I tell you, they did not come because of any effort per se on my own part. There is one thing I can tell you. I sincerely and truly love the Lord. And I desire for his name to be lifted and his glory to be revealed. If ever I pray for power is not to make a name. It's so that God can give me the privilege and the opportunity to be an extension of him to people. Everything starts and ends with him. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence, I love, I love, I love you Jesus. Listen, if I can get you to a point this night where you are willing to lay down all of the things that make you look like you love God but in truth there is an agenda that is locked up Lord I am tired of delay there are yokes in our family so they say if I fast I get your power oh yeah let me fast there's nothing wrong with that in itself but if that is what leads you he will tell you okay take this is what you want and most people will walk away from him when David had found rest round about he still had a desire lord i cannot be sitting here and not build you a house i know that you are god you sit in heaven the earth is your footstool yet give me the privilege of bringing you close to find a place in my life that in life and in death you make up your mind that this thing is not just about church. This is not just about Christianity. I genuinely love you. And no matter what you give me, no matter where I go, my ultimate desire will be to see your glory revealed, to see your power revealed in me and then through me to my world. If that becomes your desire, you have passed the first test that can truly grant a man access to host God, very superior dimensions of God. Otherwise, we will just wrap up a conference. You will receive miracles. You will receive many things and recycle your frustration back to another one year. 
seeking for something that only the size of God can feel. God put a realm called eternity in the hearts of man and only his size can feel it. A car cannot feel it. Degrees cannot feel it. That is the reason why people become successful and still commit suicide and kill themselves. Nothing wrong with success. Ladies and gentlemen, you have not seen success till God has your heart. You will lay up gold as dust. You will not even know what to do with it. God will take the prayer request of many and give you as a gift. I made up my mind. It was a vow and a covenant with God. I said, Lord, if there is anything, whether ministry, power, if it has the ability to make me lose that presence, if it has the ability, I rather, I rather not be known in my lifetime. And yet my love and my passion for him, my desire to see him revealed, remains unchanged. Heaven for me is him being with me. Heaven is not when I fly through the skies. No, if he's not there, I don't want. If he changes his location to hell, then may I never go to heaven again. It is not about the location, it's about the person. It's not about the throne, it's him who sits on the throne. If the throne is empty, what should I do there? I have no business with the throne. You have to understand this. If he's not in the church, may I never have anything to do with church. If he's not in ministry, may I have any, not, never not have anything to do with ministry. If he's not in my prosperity, may I have nothing to do with it. He becomes the epicenter of my pursuit that I desire him more than life. And he says, this is for me. Let's go to the next level. Can I be sincere with you? I apologize if I sound harsh. But many of us, I can tell you the reason why you are unable. It's not because the devil is so powerful. It's because there is, there is a corruption in the sincerity of our heart. This heart thing. You can fast for 40 days and from day one, the heart is already corrupted. You will enjoy the mercy of God. But I tell you, if it is heaven you want to host. You've heard me say it in my teachings. Till today, when I go before God, sir, I don't go before him as Apostle Joshua Selman. Nonsense! Apostle Joshua Selman. It's men that call me Apostle. Lord, Lord your boy is still here. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, you look beyond me. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, you look beyond me. Here's the part of the song I love. I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me want to host God you must love him you must desire to see him glorified not self not ambition 
Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoice. With our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why. We just tell them we love you, Lord King. Oh, we just tell them we love you, Can I tell you sincerely? Please listen to me. I know some of you are crying. It's a very simple message tonight. I have had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few extremely great people believers whether in business in government in ministry and most times when i sit down with them sincerely by god there is nothing in itself that is exceptional you will look for the wow factor and not find it all your eyes will see is the the plethora of limitations yet the results remain undeniable the key is that when God comes, please anyone come. When your heart becomes genuinely right with God and he comes to hold you and say, let's go. Your life becomes a wonder. Please listen to me. You will be seeing a mountain and come close and not see it again. Because there is a hand that picks that mountain. And men cannot see the hand. So they think it's your hand that lifted it. When God decides to come and stay with a man. Moses understood this. He said, do not let us depart from here. If your presence, we still have our weapons of war. Don't let us depart from here. We'll only embarrass ourselves. How will they know that we are different? He said, my presence will go with you. Not my presence will visit you. Moses knew it. My presence will go with you. And I, by that presence, David said, cast me not away from your presence. Cast me out of the throne, I agree. But cast me not away from your presence. It says, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Can I tell you this? Please look at me. If you lose money and you still have him, you did not lose. If you lose ministry and you still have him, sincerely you did not lose but no matter what else you have if he's not there you lost oh you lost it's only a matter of time you will know that his presence is what controls everything i have come tonight to help you understand the spiritual protocol that governs hosting god and one of it tonight is this heart condition that I call the desire of David. I desire you more than things. I desire you more than rest. I desire you more than money. Can I be sincere with you? This is the grace and one of the mysteries that has kept your precious pastor, the man of God, 20 years with all that has happened, I sat back there and while I was watching, I said, this is my message. When you see results that humans cannot produce, you know that God was involved in it. And I am telling you that you don't, you don't, it's not a parliament that calls him to come. You don't vote him to come. Your heart condition is the magnet that draws his presence to you. There are magnets that are weak they may not be able to draw much, but there are magnets that are powerful. They can lift cars. You can use them and lift cars. Your heart 
is that magnet. When you love the Lord, you can sit down and an anointing will leave a conference somewhere and come and meet you in your room. While you are there saying, Lord, I may not have all it takes to serve your purposes, but if for any reason you can find a vessel in me, I am available. And that anointing will leave a conference and come and meet you in your room. Some of you are crying because God has been showing you this message in dreams. You have not been understanding it. God is saying, it's not that I cannot lift you. It's not that I cannot open a door for you. But your heart condition. Many times I restrict my blessings to preserve you. Because as it is, if you find rest in this condition, you may not even be a Christian again. Have you not seen people who were workers in church? And God just lifted them. They went abroad and they came back like demons. House on the Rock. Enugu. One more time. The Lord is speaking to you. Don't just lift your hands. Lift your heart. Lift your heart that you can give him your heart and say, Lord, from today, you are my obsession. Blessing or no blessing, lifting or no lifting. I will teach my children your ways. Even when I sit on the throne, I will never forget you. You have become my obsession. As simple and childlike as this is, and he comes to you in power and will invest levels of his presence upon your life that you will be surprised. You will watch doors open. Brothers and sisters, you will see God do things in your life that you will marvel and wonder. People will look at you and they cannot add up where the result is coming from. But then it never stops happening because there is divine presence. You have captured levels and dimensions of God. Please don't miss tomorrow's sessions. When I found this secret, I said I will never let it go. My heart, my heart, my heart. More than my prayer, more than my preaching. My heart, my heart, my heart. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you more than ministry. I'm not serving and loving you and desiring to see your kingdom come just because I'm succeeding in ministry. Even if I were failing, my passion would not, be, would not change. Change everything in your life. But leave that desire. Leave it there. Leave it there. Don't replace it with things. Don't replace it with titles. Don't let age fade the desire away. Are we blessed behold I stand at the door of your heart and I knock if you are interested I stand at the door of your heart that's the part I'm interested I'm knocking what is it doing at the door of your heart if you choose you can open the door and let me find space but if you think your heart is full and you are too busy I am patient, I can let you be. But you can open that door and I can come in and you shut that door and I will eat with you. He was talking to John. John the Revelator was archiving what he was telling the seven churches. Behold! He was not talking to seven unbelievers. He was talking to seven churches. I am still looking for your heart. It's not new birth. This is not giving your life to Jesus. He's talking about a deeper and a richer experience. Apostle, but I've been born again. That's not what I'm talking about. He's still standing at the door. We're going to spend 10 minutes praying. Please don't be distracted. And the prayer is a prayer of surrender. Lord, impart upon me the desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David. The desire of David, according to Psalm 27. Please give us Psalm 27 and verse 4 as we pray. All the overflows outside, following online, we're about to pray. 
One thing have I desired. You have desired many things, but leave all those desires. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, and to behold you all the days of your life. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your voice. Cry to the Lord. This is you and Jesus for the next five, ten minutes. You and Jesus, your maker, the one whose presence you want to see manifest in your life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. House on the rock, Enugu. Enugu State. Pray for the desire of David. One thing have I desired. Are you praying? Please pray. Don't be tired. Take it serious. Oh, I desire you. I desire you. I desire you. The fullness of your presence and your glory in my life. Someone is praying. Nothing can take your place in my life. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Dethrone every idol. Idols of achievement. Idols of vain desires. Hallelujah. Please look at me. There are people today who threaten pastors and men of God and tell them if God does not answer my prayer, I will stop being a worker in this church. If God does not answer my prayer, I've given God, I've been a worker for one year. Can I tell you the truth? Do not make the mistake of the workers in the parable that Jesus gave the Bible talks about a parable of the owner of a vine and the workers I just felt in my spirit to say this there are many people whose Christianity is conditional while it is true that there is the covenant of service that when you serve the Lord he will bless but can I tell you this you must love him more than that I've been sweeping the house of God and nothing is changing. I'm going. And God says, that was it? Was that the motivation? Hallelujah. When your passion, your love, your drive, nothing can take that place. When you are alone with God, you remind yourself again is the object of my obsession Lord you have helped me you have shown me mercy but regardless what happens to me good or bad one thing for sure is I may change every other thing but not you not my love not my passion I will die loving you die serving you die living for you All these things we are more than conquerors on account of that love and that passion that desire please purify your desire purify your motives why do you seek him 
They sought him because they were hungry. As soon as he fed them with 5,000, with, with five loaves and two fish, all of them threw the excesses and went away. And he said, go and gather the crumbs. 12 baskets. They wasted it. We've used you and we've dumped you. We're on our way going. And he looked at the disciples. He said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? We didn't just come. We, who, whom shall we go? You alone have the word of life. And he turned them eventually to apostles of the Lamb. And some, even when they ran away, they came back repenting with brokenness. Peter said, depart from me. I am a sinner. Simon but Jonah, he said, John 21. Lovest thou more than me more than this? He said, yes. Feed my lamb. Then feed my sheep. Then feed my sheep. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Can I tell you sincerely, I stand before the God of heaven. There is nothing in my life today that I cannot surrender to prove my love for Jesus, my passion for him. I love him more than that. And my assignment tonight is to impart upon you that desire of David. I don't know how God did it in my life, oh, but it's my prayer that what he did to me, let it happen for someone in this place this night. In the name of Jesus, that no amount of money, no amount of lifting will ever make God look like a nuisance in your life. That you will not just carry him like an extra luggage. That divine presence, you will love the presence of Jesus more than power, more than ministry. If that happens to you, then you will also get the blessing of David. Don't claim the blessing of David. The blessing of David is dominion. To find someone to establish his kingdom. Today when you look at Israel. The symbol of their flag is the star of David. Not the star of Abraham. No, the star of David. The star of David. Listen to me. It was on the strength of this that I started having encounters. It was not just fasting and prayer. Many of the encounters I've had today that have changed my life, it was God coming to me. And it has not ended coming to me. My son, let me open this to you. You can open this Bible and search and there are things you will never see until God comes to you he brings them there are things that are not studied you are he comes and brings you into that body of truth you know it's easy for men of God to want to take pride in things like this to make it look as though it's our doing it's not true there are some things that only God God comes to pick you signs and wonders this grace for signs and wonders that you see Brothers and sisters, it did not. I don't think I would have had the strength and the stamina to go through it and get it that way. With the sincerity of my heart, loving Jesus. And here he comes again. He promised that if you love him and you mean business with him, you will find him. You can find God and you can host him. And a generation can know that you carry him. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. That every lukewarmness, please just help those under the anointing. And everything that has stolen his love, stolen your passion. Some of you, when you started with God, you were not like this. But right now you have thrown everything that is God in your life just the routine of church Sunday in and out but your heart is no longer with him he's speaking to you seriously there is need for that restoration because 
in this end time there are mighty things and marvelous things that God is doing in men and through men to the nations but he meets people who love him sincerely please look at me I just sense in my heart to use this opportunity and make an altar call can I do that I'm going to make a very serious altar call right now before I pray within this auditorium and all the overflows there are people whilst you were hearing me speak the Holy Ghost began to speak to you and say it is time to make things right with Jesus now I, I can't force you you are the one you can sit down and share the grace and go back but this conference was so put by your man of God because the Lord is giving someone an opportunity to restore that love and that fire for some of you you've been around the things of church but you have never truly taken God seriously I'm going to count one to five wherever you are those outside you may not maybe you may just move to your screens outside for the sake of space but those within here if you belong to that category as I count one to five honorably I'd like you to run and come and stand here one run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus Lord I'm tired of this give me a new beginning and for all of us who are standing please don't look at them just be praying talk to the Lord from the depth of your heart two are you coming to Jesus give me a new beginning give me a new beginning genuine relationship three someone is running to Jesus don't be distracted the few minutes that we have don't waste it these are moments of destiny if there's no space just stand at the aisles while we pray come to him come to him four one more count and we're done if you're still sitting please rush and join them here at this conference after 20 years God is opening a door for you hallelujah now in Jesus name please listen to me some of you here are giving your heart to Jesus genuinely and sincerely for the first time some of you I presume you're rededicating your, your life please let it be sincere from your heart no playing games let it be sincere from your heart young and old I honor and I salute you I truly appreciate you for the courage to come out those in the overflows thank you following online from whatever nation we're about to make the altar call I'd like you to be part of it right now you're following in your home your office your device please participate right now I want to plead with all of you who are in front can you lift your right hand as high high above your head to the heavens Jesus is here I'm about to lead you to pray a prayer and I want you to pray it sincerely a miracle happens when we pray a miracle happens when we pray more so when we pray in faith please say after me loud and clear inside outside say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I need your life your presence your glory I repent of my sin I declare that I do not have the power to save or help myself but I believe in Jesus I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin that you rose again for my justification right now 
I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today and forever, I am a child of God. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the authority of Scripture. I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. Please help two of them. The power of God is coming on two of them right now. There are two people just here. I don't know. I just saw that in my vision. Among those who are out here, two of them, I just saw the power of God coming on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare this experience will launch you into a new season. Not, not, not just that woman. There are two independent people aside from her. The power of God is coming on them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you that the Lord himself will use you mightily. You will experience his grace supernaturally. And I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Let this be the beginning of a new season in your life. A season of fire, a season of passion in the name of Jesus. That you will love him above and beyond anything that is in this life. Nothing should take his place in your life. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, um, I'm going to ask you, I presume, okay, what will happen is you return back to your seat rejoicing. If for any reason there is a call for those who have given their hearts to Jesus Christ, please do well to make yourself available. But before then, I'm seeing um, some counselors passing a slip. Do well to collect it before you go. Please be patient. Make sure you have the slip. Can you lift it up? Let them see what it looks like. So uh -huh. you can pick one. Just pass it. Make sure that you pick it. Go back to your seat. You can just fill it legibly and hand it over to any of the officers after the service. The Lord bless you and honor you. Please let's rise as I speak over your life. We have about five minutes and we're done for this morning. The message tonight, do not forget, is that God desires to tabernacle with men. He's proven that man has always and remains his obsession. From Genesis to Revelation, God's object, God's motivation is love. The object of that motivation is man. Above and beyond anything else, he desires man. He loves man. He's unashamed to declare his vulnerability towards man. But for him to tabernacle with man, there are conditions that must be met. Chiefest among them, as we've discussed tonight, is the heart condition. More than other spiritual principles that I'll be teaching you, the heart of man. And God granted us grace to look at the simple message through the life of David that a man can have that desire Psalm 27 one thing have I desired let that be your desire I pray for you in the name of Jesus the grace to hunger the grace to love Jesus the grace to passionately desire him and to seek him all the days of your life I declare that that grace comes upon you now say amen Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. And then I pray for you. Everything that fights that desire in your life, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a habit, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, here at this conference, we declare it broken forever. Amen. Any wrong association that fights that place of Jesus in your life every wrong pursuit that attempts to fight that place in your life in the name of Jesus you are set free from such associations and I pray for you may the Lord reintroduce himself to you in visions in dreams through scripture may you have fresh encounters in the name of Jesus Christ from now and all through this conference hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs 
I say, he's my son. Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.